What year did Mothra first appear in cinema? 1968. I'm going to go with 1966. 1961, Mothra appeared in Mothra, her own movie. Origin. She did all of her own stunts. <laughs> really? Wow. I thought so. <laughs> Tom <laughs> Cruise, who? <laughs> you see Mother Rain like. Godzilla X Kong The New Empire is the fifth film in the current MonsterVerse at Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures. Does this film live up to the hype and the expectations from the previous four Godzilla and Kong films? Let's find out on this episode of Raiders of the Lost Podcast. What's up movie friends? Welcome back to another episode of the Ultimate Film and TV Podcast and we're going to break down Godzilla X Kong The New Empire with our friend Marquez Sharp from Wade Willie TV. What's up, pal? What's going on, guys? How you doing? Doing great. Happy to have you here. We met you at a very early screening for Godzilla X Kong at IMAX headquarters. Shout out to IMAX. Thanks for the invite. We basically live there. Yeah, it was was a lot of fun. (laughs) And we were like, let's collab. Let's collab. Because you are basically like an expert on the monster verse, it seems like. Mostly, yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah, and so he's well versed. He's well versed. Well versed. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say yeah. expert yet, but I'm well versed. But you make a lot of content based on the monster verse, on Godzilla, oh, yeah. on King Kong. Have you always loved these characters your whole life, dude? Ever since, I would have to say, like, I think the first movie that I saw obviously was the 1976 Jeff Bridges King Kong, and then um, the second one I saw was actually the 1933 King Kong, and then I saw the King Kong animated movie. And then I saw 2005 Peter Jackson and then so on and so forth. Um, And the first one, the first Godzilla movie that I saw was Godzilla vs. Destroya. So I've always been a fan of King Kong and Godzilla and actually like Godzilla 1998. I know a lot of people oh, don't like right. it. Right. Roderick, Not honestly, Roderick. We, we saw it in the theaters. I really love that movie. You love like it, right? I remember as a kid, I would draw that Godzilla all the time. I would be in school drawing that particular Godzilla. <laughs> yes. I was obsessed. Do you think it was too much like a dinosaur movie, though, that one? Well, that's what they were trying to make. Yeah, no, they were trying to make like the new Jurassic yeah. Park. Yeah, kind of so-so. I would feel like um, Godzilla 1998 was more of like a huge dinosaur movie, I guess, because it didn't really feel like Godzilla because he didn't have his atomic breath. Mm-hmm. He wasn't as big. He was hunched over, looking like an iguana type thing, you know. But it yeah. looked cool though. They I made, loved they it. They made him sleek and sexy. He was yeah. fit. He was fit. Sexy yeah, he was all Godzilla. sexy. Why are you sexy for? Why are you all Fuck slim? boy Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> he had the cross earring. Yeah, he had the <laughs> cross earring. Diamond tear tattoo. Yeah, the hair's just going over like that. They actually stole the the crow stole his look. Basically. Yeah, the crow, yeah. the new crow. Who's the crow? Like, nah, Godzilla. Like, <laughs> no, but these are characters that have been around for so long. It's the 38th Godzilla film. It's the 13th King Kong film. If you had to pick a character that go, though guys who's your favorite of the two you already know that i'm the biggest kong fan on planet earth all right yeah i love kong i don't know something about and i love godzilla too because a lot of people think that when i say i love kong they're like then you must hate godzilla so I know, <laughs> That's it's, like, the it's actually possible to like both you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah you mean you there's like... such thing as nuance in the world <laughs> right exactly what? what you can like kong and godzilla it's possible <laughs> it is possible but for me personally it's gonna be kong what about you guys I think I like Godzilla more. I, I like them all a lot. Obviously, Kong, you get more of the human element because it's an ape, and you can kind of get the humanity through the expressions and everything, very similar to, like, especially the Planet of the Apes movies. But I think that we have so many apes movies lately that I lean towards Godzilla now lately. Yeah. I actually, I, I think I would prefer Kong. I, I actually really like the Peter Jackson King Kong that he made in 05. Yes. And then the, the original film is just, like, a, such a big uh, moment in cinema history, especially in the monster movie history. And so I think King Kong... I think his character development, especially in this film in particular, was my favorite part of the movie. And I'm just going to say, I would have loved to watch just a King Kong movie with just Kong just on his own in the inner earth, just like doing it. Hollow Earth. Hollow Earth. Come on. (laughs) Not not an expert. (laughs) You're like, hold on, hold on. Hollow Earth and just like doing an adventure without any dialogue. And no humans? No humans. <laughs> really? That would have been, imagine, that would have been sick. Although they would never green like that for a $200 million movie. Yeah. But I, I was actually very invested in Kong's story in this film in particular. I guess it's mm. possible to do that because there are a good amount of screen time of him by himself in Hollow Earth in this film. And a lot of the movie has minimal dialogue, especially because Gia can't speak and she's deaf. So she speaks through sign language and so do through Iwi people th- speak through tele- tele- telepathy, which you find on this film. So you could do mm. it. I think it would work out really well. But maybe... It, it'd be tough to do like an, a two hour movie like that. It'd have to be a, a tight 90 minutes. No, they could do two hours. I don't know. You just have a couple of big fights and that's all, man. And then a big <laughs> finale. Yeah. Because I really, my favorite part of this film was the Kong storyline with the Scar King. 
and then the ancient um, uh, Godzilla, whatever. I'm sorry, Shimo. Shimo. Yeah. Jeez, this guy. I already said. I already said. No, no, no. This is who I work with Shimo. every day. Oh my god. <laughs> Shimo. <laughs> Shimo. I love that storyline. And then once Scar King showed up, I was like, this movie's getting pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Not gonna lie. I enjoyed it. I love yeah. Planet of the Apes. And so, so, so there's five. Where do you guys rank this? Is it like your favorite in the fifth of, of all Ooh. five, or? How do you feel in terms of in relation to the others? I gotta say, I've never been the biggest fan of this new franchise. Mm. And the last one was actually my least favorite. Uh, Kong Skull Island was, was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I would I would say, honestly, Godzilla x Kong, the new empire, might be my favorite of the tr of the new franchise. Wow. Yeah. All right. I, 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 really? I, had a, I had a really good time with it. I love Dan Stevens. So getting him in this was a lot of fun. We're huge fans of the guest, Adam Wingard, the director of this film, one of his early horror films. And so I think this movie... I walked into it, turned my brain off. I was like, it's just a bunch of monsters fist fighting. Mm -hmm. Let's not take it seriously. I actually had a pretty good time in it. A banging soundtrack. It was a lot of fun, very colorful. Uh, it was interesting, and I, I just had a pretty enjoyable experience when I was at the IMAX theater. I yeah, say. I think that's the best way to experience in IMAX. But I will say now, like, I like the movie. I love the movie. I still have to watch it, like, two more times to get my, like direct what i think about it or like just get a final opinion on it mm -hmm. but i will say i know people aren't gonna like this movie i know it because oh, yeah. they just godzilla minus one just came out yeah and people are gonna be like oh dude why is kong like ripping this war dog apart and why is why does he have like the infinity gauntlet i don't understand and <laughs> it's because they're looking at it through like a serious lens like and it makes sense right like mm -hmm. a, a good godzilla just a really great godzilla movie just came out and adam wingard knew what he was doing with this movie it's a fun blockbuster type movie it's like it's nothing that you're supposed to go in too serious. It's something just to have fun, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I feel like a lot of people aren't going to see that. And they're going to be like, well, this this series has gotten too goofy, which I don't I don't necessarily agree with. Like, I know that it did get goofy. I know that there's, like, a realistic take. And then there's, like, the more, like, fun, I don't know, fantastic side of it where there's, like, a lot of cool things happening all the time. Um, but I personally think that the movie's good, and I know what they were going for. I like it. I'm excited for the future of the monster verse. Um, and yeah, I, I think I'll like it. I know there's going to be a lot of people who are going to complain about it. Be like, this is not serious. I don't like how not serious it is, <laughs> but I like it. Honestly, I, I liked it better. The last film was too serious. Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. I feel uh, like. Or maybe the that one before that. was the that. one I felt like that. They're just going for like a very stranger things, aesthetic and vibe. Cause they like got a Millie. lot of fun. And yeah, I mean the, the yeah. aesthetic as well. There's lots of neon bright lights and purples and reds. So I feel like they were, yeah, obviously with Millie Bobby Brown coming in, but I think that was, them trying to have fun because I would say my favorite is probably Kong Skull Island because that's basically Apocalypse Now with God, with King Kong in it, <laughs> yeah. which is super fun. You John know? C. Riley's in it. Yeah, so. John C. Riley's yeah. in it. So yeah. that, that one's maybe the funniest one, but I think that's probably the most entertaining and fun for me. I like the original Godzilla from well in 2014 mm -hmm. of this verse. Mm -hmm. um, I Gareth think, Edwards made that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gareth yeah. Edwards made that one. I thought it was really solid. Didn't love the the third act really, but I think Kong Skull Island is my favorite one. The mm. one I, I the thing with Godzilla vs Kong, I just don't love. There's too many twists, too many mi mystery boxes. If you think if you think about it, with the uh, the doctors and the the eco terrorists, like oh I'm suddenly I'm an eco terrorist too, just out of nowhere, Billy yeah. Bobby Brown's mom. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit much with the and again we have the child of dead parents from a Godzilla <laughs> massacre. So it's, yes. it's like always the same kind of thing. If, if that makes sense, but. I, I really enjoyed this one. It's probably my second favorite behind Kong Skull Island. Something I like more than the last film, I think there was just too many human characters in the last film. It was too much of an ensemble, and there were two big storylines, and I just felt like it was losing itself from what the intentions of the film should have been. In this film, this is a very small cast. Yeah. Really only a handful of lead actors in this movie. Mm -hmm. Tiny, and then a lot more focus was given to Kong and his storyline, so I thought that was a much better, a bigger improvement on the last film. Last film... There's just too much going on, mm -hmm. and the intersecting uh, storylines happening at the same time. It was just a little too much, and the kids annoyed me. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like how the kid saved the day by just spilling water on the keyboard. Yeah, I was like, "What the? Heck? This is it? Like, because Mecha Godzilla is yeah. a badass, but then yeah, just a little bit of liquor on the uh, not even on the of... not even on Mecha Godzilla, just on like the the mainframe computer, <laughs> like that kill. I'll give you that. Yeah. I was like, "Come on, this is how you guys solve the third act problem." So yeah. I think that it just got a little too complicated and too convoluted and they just came up with a couple of cheating ways to solve the conflicts in that film mm -hmm. whereas this one I think it was just much more straightforward much simpler and I had a lot more fun than I did last time in this movie you had yeah. more fun than Godzilla vs. Kong yeah you know I I can't tell I mean okay I like this movie because I think Kong gets a lot more respect GXK um, I like GXK because Kong does get a lot more like 
I don't know, wins in this one than he does like usually or in Godzilla versus Kong. Because in Godzilla versus Kong, man was getting like tossed, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. man was getting like folded like a lawn chair every moment that like. And I was like, oh man, like on the boat. But then again, on the boat, he was sedated. So I just had that reason in my mind. I'm like, okay, listen, he got clapped. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but on the boat, it's fine because he was sedated. He was also chained up in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That's like Godzilla's territory type yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? And then this one, like when they fought in Egypt or in like right near the pyramid. That was dude, sick. It's really cool. Sick. Yeah, it's badass. Like the combos, Godzilla like doing like the kick. and the He suplexed him. He, dude, the, Godzilla that, suplexed him. Boom. That was crazy. That was that when was that amazing. happened, that, when, when the suplex happened, I was like, okay, this is what this movie is. <laughs> Godzilla, Godzilla just suplexed Kong. Let's not take it very seriously. <laughs> yeah. All right? So like the, WWE. Yeah. the latest entry, let's do a little plot here. Yeah, okay. what's what's the background of this film, James? Follows up the explosive showdown of a Godzilla vs. Kong with an all-new cinematic adventure, pitting the mighty Kong and the fearsome Godzilla against a colossal, undiscovered threat, who Anthony called ancient Godzilla, <laughs> hidden within <laughs> <in> our world. <laughs> and Scar King. <laughs> hidden within our world, challenging their very existence and our own. The epic new film will delve further into the histories of these titans, their origins, and the mysteries of Skull Island and beyond, while uncovering the mythic battle that helped forge these extraordinary beings and tied them to humankind forever again, directed by Adam Wingard. Rebecca Hall comes back as Dr. Eileen Andrews, who is a monarch anthropological linguist. Brian T. Henry is back as Bernie Haynes, who runs the Titan Truth podcast, which is hysterical because we're on a podcast I right now. I felt attacked in this film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not crazy. <laughs> All right. Kaylee Huddle Gia is, uh, is back as Gia, who is now Eileen's adoptive daughter, the last survivor of the Iwi tribe. And then we have Dan Stevens, who comes into play as Trapper, a new character, but a regular in Wingard's films. He's so good in The Guest. Have you ever seen The Guest? I've never seen The Guest. You've got to watch it. i got to watch amazing. The Guest. Do you like horror films? You know what? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't watch them a lot, but I feel like that's something that I could easily get into yeah. like a lot more. It's a non-traditional horror film. It's yeah. not like a scares horror film. It's just like a crazy horror film. It's camp, but yeah. it also has like a very 80s vibe, which Wingard brings to these films, obviously. Mm -hmm. This movie has a, a banging soundtrack, lots of 80s, we got a lot of synths, so I think that's one of my favorite parts of the movie. I saw you bobbing your head Yeah, I was having time. a good time yeah. at this movie. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It was a great yeah. time. I was, I was, yeah, I was bobbing my head during this movie. <laughs> you, were, you, were like, you were feeling it, man. Yeah, like you, I, you stood up and started dancing. Yeah. Yeah. I you saw ask, that? Yeah, saw that? Yeah, I had to pull you down. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we're at IMAX, man. We're at we're IMAX. IMAX. <laughs> now, again, like I said, this is the fifth film in the MonsterVerse. First, we had Godzilla back in 2014 which starred several superheroes including Aaron Taylor <laughs> Johnson and Scarlet Witch <laughs> Cranston oh. as well Ken Watanabe yeah. Kong Skull Island in 2017 then we had Godzilla King of the Monsters in 2019 Godzilla vs. Kong back in 2021 and again Godzilla X Kong the New Empire just came out and it's expected to be a huge hit because all the other ones are very successful films. The first film in 2014, Godzilla made $530 million at the box office. Mm -hmm. Kong Skull Island is the most profitable. It pulled $568 million at the box office. Godzilla King of the Monsters was the lowest performer, $287 million. Then Godzilla vs. Kong was $470 million at the box office. So this is obviously going to be a hit, and this is at a budget of upwards of $200 million. Ooh. Big movie. I expected to do half a billion, maybe more if it's good word of mouth, but I get I bet it'll be hit Godzilla vs. Kong uh, numbers. I expect an opening weekend of about fifty million dollars, I would say domestically. Probably. Really? Yeah. Well it, it always performs more uh, well international. Domestically they all pull in two hundred at max, like usually under there. So I expected to pull three hundred over three hundred million dollars internationally, I think. There's something I missed. What? And that was Ken Watanabe. Yeah. Just one of the best actors alive, and he's been in several of these films, and he wasn't in this film. I brought him up earlier, bro. He was sorely missed for me as he's well. He's been around yeah. in a bit. He wasn't in Godzilla vs. Kong? No. 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 I'm bad he hasn't been in around since <laughs> Kong Skull Island, right? King of the Monsters, right? Was he in King of the Monsters? No. I don't think so. He's only in the first two, I believe. Oh, shit. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait no, wait. no. Yeah, yeah. The first, that's it. Just the first two, I think. Mm -hmm. I guess because so. then they replace him with other people. Because there's always mad scientists coming in and changing <laughs> it up. Because mm -hmm. now it's like a different division. Because then Kong Skull Island, that's the one where Skarsgård's. No, no, no. That's uh, Skarsgård's. Oh, no, 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 no. We have Tom Hiddleston. Loki, Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. And then Skarsgård comes in for Godzilla vs Kong. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's that's right. There's a lot of characters. Yeah. There's been a lot of movies. So it was Isaac Gonzalez and Skarsgård in the last film, and oh, I yeah, like their characters, but I was like, they don't really feel like they work with what's going on. 
Really? Yeah. So well, I, they're I, giant monsters yeah. and titans, so I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a reason you're, why you're I, looking too much for character development in these movies. I'm just man. saying, I like these. I like less characters. I like Brian Tyree Henry. I think he's a uh, had so much great energy, and he was really personable in this film, and, and hit that comedy that we needed. Oh and yeah. And Dan Stevens coming into this, being like that cowboy. Like just having so much fun, cowboy dentist. charming, oh, cowboy yeah. dentist. <laughs> yeah, he was King Schultz basically. <laughs> oh yeah, but <laughs> modern day one, and he was just a lot of fun, and he he bounced really well off of uh, Rebecca Hall's character, who's been uh, a very good lead for the last couple. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we got a bunch of Titans in this movie. I can't remember some of the names of a few because we just saw this on what like March twelfth was it something like that a week mm, ago and it, like it came out on March 29th. This episode's posting on April Fool's Day actually, so it's a real we're, episode. We're just going off it's memory from when we saw it a week ago because there's no information about it online. We're under embargo, so we can't even talk about this film. We're legally. recording it illegally. Yeah, we haven't posted it though. <laughs> no, we're not. Yeah, exactly. We Doesn't mean we can't it. talk about it. Exactly. Yeah. About it. yeah, exactly. But the main antagonist of this film is the Scar King, mm -hmm. who is this new massive ape because in the film. Kong, he's in Hollow Earth. He's trying to find other giant apes, other apes. He's trying to find his family or or people like him or, or apes like him. He's, right. he's lost. He's, he's a lone survivor, really. Mm -hmm. And he discovers Scar King in this tribe. And Scar King is as strong as Kong, except more agile and athletic. He's a huge threat. He's a gigantic primate-based creature with an appearance quite similar to that of Kong, except with a more of a chimpanzee head and slender, muscular uh, body mm -hmm. and more of an orangutan like physique with lengthy arms and legs. He also has a different weapon than Kong. He uses this weapon called a whiplash, which is a spinal column of a knight, another titan we assume he killed. Mm -hmm. And he also, at the tip of it, has a blue crystalline blade that's used to control with pain an ancient titan. The ancient Godzilla, like ancient ancient Godzilla. Godzilla. Shimo, Shimo. Shimo Pain, who is now. Uh, a new titan introduced in this film. Shimo, the word in Japanese, means cold or frost or white. Makes Shimo sense. is a reptilian kaiju, somewhat similar to Godzilla, but with white scales, blue dorsal plates, and horns. I love the design of Shimo. Looks yes. terrific. And their awesome attack is basically just like ice beam, ice breath. And it's said in the film that Shimo caused the last ice age. Mm -hmm. uh, the visual effects in the film was really impressive. Really? Every I thought everything looked very good, mm -hmm. and especially Shimo and the Scar King. Uh, I think because they got a little more colorful, a little more out there, yeah, and it worked. And I think that CGI did it, they did a very good job with the CGI. I thought it was believable most of the time, and I really enjoyed the Scar King. I loved his weapon, and I loved the crystal dagger that he uses to c control Shimo. Yeah. What I love more is that we didn't like get the backstory of how he got that, what it does exactly. I know what it is though. What is it? Can that, you explain? Yeah, that whip. Okay, mm -hmm. so the whip. I'm okay. I'm not saying that this is confirmed or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure the whip. Is a warbat skeleton with the rings whipped off, or the wings oh. ripped off. So you remember um, in Godzilla versus Kong, where Kong just entered Hollow Earth, yeah, and then he fought those two snake creatures. Yeah, it's one of those, except for just skinned. And oh, it's okay. Just like the whip, nice. and then he just took one of Shimo's like ice thingies, and then probably put it at the end to control her. Okay, see, we didn't. I didn't think we needed that, and they didn't put it in. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They, there wasn't backstory of like what exactly is this, and how does it control Shimo? It, it seemed like it's one yeah. of her dor dorsal plates. Yeah, yeah. and it, they just we didn't need to know. All we needed to know is that it does work. And, yeah, and they showed that the Scar King once they opened up the cavern under the lava mm -hmm. to reveal Shimo, and then he started controlling her. That's all we need to know. We don't need to know like the backstory of how he did it. How he learned to use it and how, the, all of that. Mm -hmm. We just, I, I was like, it was really, really refreshing to not get that backstory to distract us. And we understand it works, what it does. Let's move on. And it was really smart. It's straight to the point. Every exactly. single thing that happened in the movie is straight to the point. Yeah. They don't skip a beat at all. Simple. At all. Simple. <laughs> I really Simple. like Suko in this film, too. Oh and Suko God. is super cute. Suko is a juvenile primate based creature with general appearance to that of Kong, however, with more reddish hair like. Uh, Scar King has, and basically like a like a kid, like a teenager, a like murderous just, kid. Yeah, mur very murderous <laughs> yes. kid. But I thought Suko was a great like breath of fresh air, a lot of brevity, a lot of comedy. Sort of Kong becomes a father figure to Suko because you can assume under Scar King's rule, no one feels like they're that Scar King is a positive force in their life. But Kong eventually becomes for Suko. Yeah, and you know I figured out um, Suko has like ten or fifteen brothers and sisters because I asked Adam and. Um, when we got outside of the war room or whatever, um, if Suko is Scar King's son, he's like, well, what do you think? And I'm like, well, I guess it makes sense because they do look exactly the same. And I'm all like, and he's like, did you notice that there was a lot of other, you know, baby Sukos or whatever around? I'm like, yeah. He's like, so just put into your head what Scar King was doing this entire time. And I'm all like, wow. So he just had babies with every single, you know, 
other Titan down there, and now there's just like a little army of tiny Sukos walking around down there. It's kind of crazy. I noticed in in the Scar King's like throne room, there were a couple of female apes that were clearly like his his women. Yeah, and so exactly. I'm, that's what I'm guessing. I connect those together. Those are the kids. Yeah, just, mm. just alpha of the tribe yeah. and just taking everything for what he wants, and just kind of represents the worst of what humanity could be. Whereas Kong is a much more positive sense of what humanity can be. I think. I think that was purposefully done right there. I love the Scar King's posturing. I love the performance. The mo like, however, they it just reminded me of the villain from the last Planet of the Apes film, Koba. Um, Koba. Koba had those vi Koba. Koba. <laughs> and he was just like a badass, but also like deranged and unhinged, and, um, and so such an aggress aggressor. Mm -hmm. And I thought that just the performance of the character of the Scar King was really great and something we hadn't seen. It had he they put a lot of personality into the character that we hadn't seen in any of these films, I think, from the other Titans. Oh, yeah. yeah. By far. This is probably the most um, character-driven enemy that we've had. I mean, compared to Mechagodzilla, because I don't know if you guys knew this either, Mechagodzilla is um, the soul of King Ghidorah. Yeah, it's, That's it's, why it's he was their stripping. soul inside, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, from the skull, yeah. Because it's supposed yeah. to be, I can't remember the guy's name who developed it, who's controlling it, but after he gets fried, that Titan takes over the body mm -hmm. of Mecha Godzilla. Right? Sarazaka son. Yeah. yeah. I always remember remember the Mecha Godzilla in South Park. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw that. What was oh it? God, it was so funny. It's ridiculous. I can't remember what they put together, but they put together like a bunch of random stuff to make a Mecha Godzilla to fight like a Mothra type villain robot villain in in south park oh it was, that was an early days episode back in the it day it was really like, funny you would love it yeah. i would google yeah. it yeah it's i a, have to google it's that a funny yeah, ass episode. It to you. it's insane well speaking of mothra mothra's in this movie as well just like in the last film she's given her name mothra obviously because she resembles a giant moth and mm -hmm. she's a very powerful titan titan and in this movie uh gia who's the last surviving iwi girl until they discover an iwi tribe inside hollow earth she is basically a prophesied tribe member who's supposed to come back to Hollow Earth and awaken Mothra to save the day, basically, which is really cool. Just to have this great character from the last film is now like the savior of, of Hollow Earth. Yes. But yes. We got a lot of backstory where we learned that the Iwi people lived with the massive apes and the giant apes protected the Iwi people who also protected Hollow Earth. So they worked together sort of as dual communities uh, just protecting everything. I really mm -hmm. like the, the culture they built and the Iwi culture and the temples and the architecture and uh, the community that was there. I liked that. I thought it was really interesting. And it had like Ghostbusters vibes with that really? huge temple at the end of Ghostbusters. Yeah, I guess, yeah. It reminded me of that, their temple and then the crystalline interior. But, but I just was getting... Heavy Ghostbuster vibes from that temple area. I was getting Zelda vibes. Zelda vibes, Zelda. yeah. <laughs> Never-ending story vibes. Yeah. 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 I think it was really cool. Because Adam Wingard, the director, he actually walked us through. We mentioned the war room earlier. Yeah. There's this room at, at IMAX where they decorated the entire interior with uh, concept art, props, as well as uh, visual effects footage of the CGI work that, that they were doing. And he, stepped, he walked us through step-by-step. Step. They had a, a whole mood board, which is like an inspiration board. He drew from a lot of comic books and graphic novels and just really fun retro artwork and very colorful retro artwork to to build a lot of the sets and sequences in this film. And I thought it was just really interesting to see that. It was so cool to get taken behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. I snapped a photo and I got in trouble, but <laughs> oh, they were like, no photos. I was like, shit, <laughs> no one said. <laughs> a couple people were filming, yeah. but I guess they worked for, they worked for, for, for Legendary. Yeah, legendary. Yeah. But I, I didn't know we couldn't take photos, but uh, I got caught immediately. And I stopped you from taking one. I was like, no photos. No yeah. photos. <laughs> but they are very nice about it. I just deleted it and uh, obviously didn't share it. But it was so cool to see behind the scenes and to see like all the details and the prop work. And it's uh, film is so interesting because on the screen – and in the camera, things look so realistic. Right. But often, oftentimes, things are shells. Where it, it, exteriors are shells. Buildings would be the just facades or what we see, and it's really empty on the inside. And mm -hmm. there were there were a couple of books on the table, and they had just covers that were printed to make them look wrinkled and stuff. But the inside was just brand new books. But mm -hmm. on camera, it looks like they're old books yeah. shot from the right angle. So it was, it's always fun to see behind the curtain. And to see clops, props up close and see that difference. And it was just so cool to see behind the scenes. But I think that uh, the, the artwork and concept art was really was cool. And he drew from interesting ideas to put into this film. I think oh, my yeah. favorite part of the War Room was where we learned that Godzilla was influenced by his cat. Oh, yeah. my Director God. Adam Wingard's cat. They yes. based a lot of the movements <laughs> and some of the sleeping off Godzilla on his cat. Sleeping in the Coliseum. Sleeping, <laughs> sleeping yes. in the Coliseum in Roma. 
was basically a reflection of his cat sleeping in like a bed or something like that. So I love how he drew from his own curled up. Life. Yeah, it, it looked like a cat too. It did yeah. a great job. It was very cute. I'm not gonna lie, Godzilla sleeping like that was like it's just really it's really cute. I don't know. I've never seen that before for Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> it makes because sense. He talked about how Godzilla minus one, the director based Godzilla's aesthetic and look off of a cat. But I, when I watched the movie, I talked about it in our episode on Godzilla minus one that he looked like a dog to me. But now I think about it, he did look like a cat with the tail. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah, with the chin. In the, in the in the face because we have a cat as well and like mm. cats have that like that fuzzy chin that's like rounded and then when I think of Godzilla minus one that Godzilla design kind of does look like it a does. cat now yeah which is really great he also has a soul patch <laughs> yeah. cat. no I'm just kidding <laughs> your cat okay yeah. no but that was one of my favorite shots they did it twice where Godzilla is just taking a nap inside the Coliseum in yeah. minus in minus one he looked very cute chasing the boat yeah he, he, looked, like, he looked very he did he's looking yeah. just like chasing a little toy or something yeah. like that like, oh, someone, put a, someone put a meme of a puppy on his head and it looked great that's what I mean Aww. it looked like a dog he wants to play dude he wants to play <laughs> now Godzilla goes through some cool changes in this film we obviously have a new color because Godzilla we find out in the film charges up now he goes and starts going on a radiation spender. He's just like he's just getting messed he's up. Got he's problem. Just, he yeah. gets, got problems. Yeah, he can't stop getting that radiation because <laughs> yeah. he knows he has to charge up for something big. Because Godzilla can always sense like Kong nearby or whatever. Mm -hmm. Any other Titans. And yeah. so he's charging up to face this threat that's in Hollow Earth. And so he goes to a couple radiation facilities, gets some radiation, but then he attacks a Titan somewhere underneath, I think it was Antarctica or the North Pole. Tiamat, yeah. Tiamat. Tiamat, the Titan Tiamat, mm. just goes into her domain and just messes her up and then <laughs> fucks her up inside of her. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. he ripped like, her I was up. Just, I was just watching Netflix, bro. Just yeah. <laughs> Tia, Tia Met just chilling by herself. <laughs> Not like, bothering oh anyone. Mansley just broke yeah. into her house and just killed her <laughs> yeah. for no reason, oh like, God. at all. I felt bad for Tia Met. Yeah. Like, she murked her. She, she was defending anything. her home. <laughs> she, she was just chilling by herself. She yeah. was like a human. My goodness, Tia Met, poor girl. My name is Godzilla gets in, charges up, and he gets yassified. I heard about that. Queenzilla. Queenzilla, that's queen. He's slaying, bro. He's slaying. He's slaying. He's slaying. <laughs> <laughs> Takes on the pink power and, and radiation of Tiamat yeah. and charges up for the whole film. But I love the shot of Godzilla in ice breaking through it when he's ready to go. That's attack. cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Man, a lot ready. of this film was shot in IMAX. Actually, yeah, the whole, with the whole IMAX, movie was. Yeah, IMAX whole... film cameras were used a few times. One of the best shots in the film was in that Arctic location, the just helicopter shot pushing in towards that the glacier. Yeah. That was just. It was, was massive, amazing. and it filled the screen from top to bottom. It was just so stunning to behold. And this whole film was shot on film. Yeah, I noticed that immediately. We were talking about uh, afterwards how beautiful it looked, the grain. Yeah, and um, so many of these big blockbusters are shot digitally, and it's sometimes it's too clean. Yeah, and also CGI, I think works better with the grain, with grain. of film because it it blends in, mm -hmm. whereas sometimes it can be too clean, and and you can really stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah, especially when you have actors performing in in front of green screen with CGI. But when everything has that layer of grain over it, so you have the actors and then they also project the CGI animation on film too, mm -hmm. it, it adds uh, a blending of the images and it makes the CGI more believable in my opinion. Yeah, it just feels more warm and nostalgic mm -hmm. when I see grain. It reminds yeah. me of old 70s film or, so, or even an 80s film. Exactly. It makes my heart all warm. Like, oh, grain. That's like, cool. I was, you, can, you, can, you know, you just know yeah. it. You can feel it yeah. when yeah. you watch film. Mm -hmm. It just feels nostalgic and it, two minutes into the film, it's just, you're just like, it looks better too. Yeah, it, it does. It looks so much better. It just works. Yeah. 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 I was like, oh shit, he shot this on film. Yeah. He's not messing it's around. First yeah. MonsterVerse movie to be shot entirely in IMAX's 191 aspect ratio. Wow. wow. So it's the first one shot completely for IMAX. Wow. And it was an awesome presentation. We got to go to IMAX headquarters to watch it. Was it your first time there? Yes. It's pretty cool. That was my first right? time ever being invited to like a, you know, pre premiere type thing or like a screening more like um, to see those things and the first time ever meeting a director of a film that I love so much. So that was like crazy especially when we first got there and stuff like that we were trying to be as professional as possible <laughs> just walking up acting like not human just being like hello yes you gotta so, act like you meanwhile J james yeah. james and i are mowing down prosciutto and wine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're very lucky it was a good spread it was a good spread it was yeah. a great spread we're, we're very fortunate because we get to go there pretty often pretty much any movie that comes on imax we mm. get to go there we've been going to imax hq since 2021 the first film we saw there was reminiscence uh -huh. from warner brothers but we pretty much see every big movie that comes out in imax we get to go there early see that is amazing so, yeah, it's really cool experience because it's the best theater a couple weeks ago we got to host a private screening for dune part two there which was awesome no way yeah we got yeah. to bring like 60 insane. fans and a bunch of friends so it was a really cool experience so we love imax 
People think IMAX pays us. They don't. We hype up IMAX <laughs> all the time. We've been yeah. going to IMAX since we were kids. Yeah. We saw 300 in IMAX when we were kids. Man we of saw, Steel. Man of, yeah, Lucky. old. Yeah. yeah, we saw a bunch of old films. Oh my God, they're old now. In IMAX, Spider Man Three, we saw in IMAX. You know, we've been fans of IMAX and the brand since we were kids. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a brand that like we're happy to collaborate with, and it's just one of our favorite companies in the film industry. And yeah. legendary too. Was three hundred a legendary movie? Legendary, yeah. Yeah, legendary's what? made a, it was legendary? Yeah, a bunch of great movies. They've yeah. also made the town. Did they really? They made the town. Fuck but, yeah, legendary. But we, we love working with legendary. This is our first time like actually meeting them in person too. So we love their films. They make a bunch of great Warner Brothers productions. They made a bunch of Chris Nolan movies too. So Legendary is an awesome production studio. Yes. Yeah. I'm loving uh, Legendary right now. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah. They're killing it. They Crushing are it. killing it. They have for a while. But how about we take a break, guys, and head to our intermission. Yes. We'll do some fun trivia games, and then we'll get back to our episode on Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. But before we continue, the best way to support Raiders of the Lost Podcast is to sign up for Patreon at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Why would someone want to sign up for Patreon? I don't know. Because you get awesome perks like private messages, video messages. You get access to our Discord, which is an incredible film community. We have watch parties on there every couple of weeks. We, uh... Gets you access to free merchandise as well. Tons of great goodies if you sign up for Patreon at patreon.com slash Raiders of Lost Podcast. Another great way to support the show is leave those five-star rings and reviews on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Cool tidbit about this. At 5,000 Apple ratings, I'm going to get a tattoo of whatever Anthony decides on the body. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so hopefully it's More cool. ratings, please. Hopefully it's something cool. So leave those ratings on Spotify and Apple. I'll read one out in just a minute because they're always so fun and heartwarming and hilarious. And also another great way to support the show is just share us. Word of mouth is the best way for a podcast to grow. So tell everybody about the show. Send us to everyone in your contacts. Tell grandma about our show. If you have any movie fans, any MonsterVerse friends, send them this episode. And thanks for tuning in. This episode, of course, is sponsored by our friends at MoviePosters.com, the number one place to get your posters online today. Be sure to use our promo code Raiders10 at MoviePosters.com to get 10% off your order right now. They have a huge selection of pretty much every movie and TV show imaginable in their poster library. Any MonsterVerse fans, get your posters over at MoviePosters.com. They also have sizes, framing, and even backlighting for any of your poster needs. So go to that website, use our promo code Raiders10, and get 10% off your order right now all right let's get into our intermission let's do it and the first yes. thing we're going to do is a movie quote competition Ooh. Okay, uh right, right. everyone is prepared to prepared. try to stump each other i'll go yes. first and we'll see if you guys can guess what film this is from okay here we go this is a couple characters talking so it's it's more than one quote i say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit it's the only way to be sure <laughs> fucking a ho, ho, hold on one second this installation has a significant dollar value attached to it they can bill me <laughs> Any guesses? Yeah, I have a guess. Do you want to go first? No, I have nothing. I have no <laughs> this is uh, Aliens. It is Aliens. No, yeah. I didn't know it was Aliens. <laughs> they can bill me. Fucking A. Fucking A. Because <laughs> Bill Paxton, Paxton says, I, I say we take I off. I say we nuke. take off. Nuke, man. The entire site from orbit, Game man. over, man. Game over, man. <laughs> Game over. Oh, my uh, God. I love that movie. All right, who wants to go next? I'll go next. This is one person talking. He's all wrong for us, baby. I saw you beat that man like I saw no man get beat before, and the man kept coming after you. No, we don't need no man like that in our lives. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you do that one more time? Because you started doing an accent at halfway through. <laughs> he has a raspy voice. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> He's all wrong for us, baby. I saw you beat that man like I never saw no man get beat before, and the man kept coming after you. No, we don't need no man like that in our lives. This has got to be a Rocky movie. I was going to say Rocky 2. Which Rocky movie? Rocky yeah, 2 Rocky is correct. Two, yeah, 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 yeah. It's Duke. Okay. It's Duke warning Apollo about rematching with Rocky. Yeah, his coach. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't yeah. know if that's true, but I don't, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's a good quote. It's a good one, right? I fucking love Rocky, man. I just watched Rocky 4 last night. It's <laughs> fucking awesome. Like, is it here. good? It's Dude, oh my God. It. It's so good. I've never Bro, seen you, it. Have no. you seen have the other seen, Rockies? No. you never seen any Rocky I have not seen any of the Rocky movies. I was a lucky guest saying Rocky 2. Wow. wow. You got a... What are you doing this weekend, man? <laughs> Let's watch the Rocky movie. Dude, yeah, they're all 90 minutes. They're amazing. Really? The first mo the first film won Best Picture. Really? That's they're, how they're good it is. They're amazing movies. And then they're they're just... The first four are fantastic. And Creed is part of it. Creed is obviously... Creed's yeah. like the, yeah. Yeah. Apollo Creed is like the most badass boxer ever. Yeah. He's, he's so the Apollo, so yeah, main antagonist. Creed is the son of Apollo Creed. Okay. In the Rocky Adonis movies. Played Creed. by Carl, Carl Weathers. Yeah. And Apollo Creed is just one of the best characters ever. Oh, but wow. oh my god, so cool. watch them. They're all on Max. Okay. Yeah, I highly recommend them. 
I'm gonna watch those now because now Fuck I feel yeah. like I'm missing. They're out all short. So much, They're all dude. short. Yeah, I could do it. We have the DVD set somewhere if you want to borrow it, <laughs> dude. I'd be, I'd be more than more than excited set. to borrow dude, those. Yeah, we have the Blu-ray set Help somewhere. Yourself. Yeah, we? we'll, we'll look. For, oh yeah, yeah we, the we box have, sets right yeah, there behind Godzilla. Oh yeah, it's, it's right behind, behind Scar King. Yeah, yeah. Is it behind Scar King? Is it yeah, behind yeah. Scar King? Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Feel free to take it if you want. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I have one. I have one. I have. Go for it. Okay. Oh man, mine are so like generic now compared to your guys'. I'll probably I'll probably like say one myself too. Okay, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they never stopped to think if they should. Jurassic Park. I, Park. I knew it. I was like, that's gonna be way too obvious. Yeah, Dude, Dr. E. I Malcolm. forgot to tell you that. Like, really try to stump us because we're pretty good. Okay. Yeah. We've seen a few movies. Okay. How about this one? How about this one? This one's a little bit shorter. Ready? Ready? Good form, Peter. Good form. Good form, Peter. Is that Hunger Games? Nope. Is no. it Peter or Peter that you say? Peter. Okay. Peter. But he says Peter. Good form, Peter. Good form. Who's Peter? It's oh, it's Captain Hook. I mean, yes, it's Hook. It's Hook. It's Hook. Hook. It's okay. Dustin. Yeah, Hook. it's Dustin Hoffman. It's Hook. Nice. Yes. Yep. yep. All right. Yeah. All right. That nice kind of one, dude. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good Dustin impression. Yeah. That's why I got <laughs> it. That's that's why I got it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Guess this movie release year. What year did Cloverfield come out? Two thousand and eight. I'm yeah, gonna go two thousand ten. 2008 is correct. Oh, wow. We have a winner. Oh, my nice God. Job. We have a winner. Okay. Remember that trailer? Oh, man. Oh, my that God. That was a sick movie. That, yeah. was, that was a great trailer. Nobody knew what the fuck it was. <laughs> kind of scared the hell out of me. Not going to lie. wild. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Guess this <laughs> movie release year. What year did Rocky IV come out? 1984. 19. Oh, man. 1987. 85. Oof. Close. So close. closer. He wins. So you lose, you fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't even seen the man. I was like, he hasn't them. even seen them. <laughs> Christ, he, has, he hasn't even seen them. He was like, you better know. I feel like Tia Tim just chilling and getting attacked out of nowhere. It's Tia Man. Tia Man. Whatever. Giving me shit earlier. Tia Tim. Who the hell is Tia Tim? Ancient snake. Yeah. Tia Met. Tia Met. Tia Met. Acted like an expert earlier. Got you. Got him. Got him. You suspect. You suspect. What about what about? You mustn't read from the book. Uh, oh, that's Evil Dead. Nope. Oh, another another quote. You mustn't read from the book. No, you mustn't read from the book. Oh, it's Last Crusade. No. No, oh, it's, it's, um... The oh, it's mummy. mummy. Yes! <laughs> yes, you got it, you got it, you got it. Yeah. You must not read from the book. You mustn't read from the book. Yes. It was pretty dumb, Rachel Vice. It was pretty dumb. The yeah. book of the dead. <laughs> she couldn't help herself. We just read it out loud. Yeah, dude. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Uh, do you have a movie for a movie release here or no? Nah? Um, let me think. No worries if not. I like the quote. Okay, when did The Lost World of Jurassic Park come out? What year? Uh, 95? 2003? The Lost World, Jim. Oh, The Lost, Lost World. World. Oh, um, <laughs> I don't know. 1998? Yes. Yes, you got it. That oh, was yeah. so good. <laughs> he said 2003 first, so yeah. it was not so good. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't I remember talking, he things. said 2000, but did I you get You were thinking it? of Jurassic Park 3, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I was thinking about Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> <laughs> you were. Yes, I was, because that came out in 2003. No, you can look, you you can look it up. I know, it, I'm sure it did, but that's not what you were thinking of. I was thinking of that. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I Thank swear, you. that's what I was Shut thinking of. Shut the fuck up. I have, I have Get one, out of here, William I have, H. Mason. I have one friend on this show. It's not you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so what's happening right now? <laughs> All right. Movie pop quiz time. Guys, what year did Mothra first appear in cinema? 1968. I'm going to go with 1966. 1961. Oh, Mothra appeared wow. in Mothra, her own movie. Origin. She did all of her own stunts. <laughs> really? Wow. I thought so. <laughs> Tom Cruise, who? <laughs> Just see Mothra running like. <laughs> of, course, of course a woman did it and it was erased from history <laughs> of course right of course. who wants to talk about that though right <laughs> justice for Mothra just for Mothra she gets her justice in this movie. it's a great it's just like a, it looks like a paper mache moth just in the air I'm yeah. sure it was I'm sure it was like <laughs> definitely <laughs> okay my quiz question is how many screenplays has Sylvester Stallone written let's see Rocky Rocky 2 Rocky 4 um, you also first wrote Rocky blood. one. Oh yeah, you that's said what I Rocky, said. I said yeah. Rocky, but I don't think yeah. you wrote the third one, right? You wrote them all. Did you write all four? Yeah. Thanks for the hint. So we got four Rockies. <laughs> <laughs> he might have wrote Rocky five, maybe. I don't know. He's definitely wrote First Blood. Definitely wrote another one of the Rambo's. Um, the Expendables, Expendables two, Expendables three. Um, 
Probably Expendables Four. Oh my lord. Um, oh, what's the, the the one where you hit with the knife? What's it called? Fucking Cobra. Bro. Cobra Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You gotta watch Cobra. <laughs> it's so cheesy. We gotta put you on all Stallone's movies. We I'm, have to. Yeah. I'm just gonna say twelve. Guess. I had no idea this man wrote. <laughs> he actually directed a lot of movies. Yeah, he's, he's directed eight movies. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah he oh directed my God. too. Yeah. I feel like such a newbie now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't sleep on Sly. He's a bro. legend, man. Don't I'm gonna go with 13 legend. since he said 12. <laughs> so let's just Price is right rules. This fucking guy. <laughs> Sly has written 28 films. What? Jesus, 28 <laughs> yeah. movies. He wrote Cliffhanger. That's right. Yeah. He, he actually made two movies between Rocky One and Two that he wrote and starred in. A bunch of movies in the 80s. Everything he's acted in, pretty much he wrote. That's crazy. He's written a ton of screenplays. Yeah, I, f- yeah. I figured 12 would be low, but I didn't think it was going to be 20. All, all movies. of his movies, like a majority of the films he starred in, he wrote. That's the thing. No one understands how much that guy's written. Yeah. Even I didn't. He's realize. also wrote a few films that he did not act in. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. He wrote a, a Statham movie. Yeah, he wrote something. another movie with another action star he wrote, but didn't, didn't um, act in it. Damn. So he's a prolific it's writer. a busy guy. Yeah. This man is. Jeez. That's how you control your career, man. Like yeah. The Stephen yeah. King of scripts. <laughs> yeah, for real. He's like behind the scenes doing all the work, yeah. dude. Holy shit. And he directed Rocky 2, 3, and 4. Oh, and word? Rocky 5. Yeah. Did um, he write Rocky 5? Rocky Balboa. He wrote all the Rocky wrote movies. All the Rockies. Rocky Balboa. He only has a screenwriting editing credit on the Creed film. The first one? The first one. And then not involved in the story in the second two, obviously. But yeah. Really? Yeah. He's yeah. not even, he doesn't even, they don't even show him in the third one. I liked the third Creed. I liked it a lot, but they didn't even show a photo of Rocky. They shut him yeah, out. They shut him out. Was the third Creed the best out of all three? I would first probably Creed's the best. Yeah, I would say. It's debatable. I'd say the first I really one. enjoyed the Creed three. It, uh, Michael B. Jordan, I think, knocked it out of the park. With There's the no Creed Rocky movies. in it though. I know, but still, but it's a really good movie. But the first one is great because Sylvester's awesome. And he got a Golden Globe win for that movie, an Oscar oh, yes. nomination. Yeah, and um, yeah. I, it's the one where Creed really feels like an underdog in the yeah. most way. And Rocky yeah. has cancer. That's but, it. But, yeah, and Adrian's dead. <laughs> spoilers! All of them. Oh it's my! Spoilers! <laughs> well, I don't even know tra- who it is yet. It's in so. the trailer. The trailer opens up at the tombstone. <laughs> no, that he has can- no, that he has cancer. Yeah, it's in the trailer. No, no that's not in the trailer. That happens halfway through. <laughs> Spoiler: <laughs> He gets hacked. <laughs> You're gonna take the minute black thing. Like, I don't remember. Okay, there we yeah, go. Sorry, We're good. Sorry, man. I forgot he. Well, you've seen. Have you not seen the Creed movies? I haven't. Oh, if he hasn't seen the start. Rocky movies, I doubt he's seen the Creed. I gotta see them in order. I can't watch because my dad was all like, "You should watch Creed," and I'm all like, "Isn't that part of the?" Rocky movies, like yeah, but it's still great. I'm like, I'm gonna start from the beginning first. Yeah, you should. Beginning. Beginning. You should yeah. because it's worth it. Uh, watching Apollo Creed and then getting into Creed's a lot better versus watching his son because Apollo Creed's the fucking man. Yes, he's the fuck. It's Carl yeah. Weathers in his Ugh. prime, like just like in Predator. He's so yeah. so ripped in that movie. Yeah, he is shredded. Dude, there, he's, a, he's a monster in number four. Yeah, he's fucking huge in number four. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Oh I was like, god. oh my god, he's a giant. I love Carl Weathers. Bigger? Oh yeah, god, that's awesome. Oh man, he's massive. Just. Slot sweat. Peak, peak men's physique. Lots of close-ups on muscles. Training montages. <laughs> training, fighting. And the fights in Rocky 2 are fucking great. Oh, oh my god, my they're so god. good. Oh, I want to watch them now. I'm getting fired up just thinking. Dude, yeah. so like, Rocky's the, like a movie that makes you, you could run through a wall. Like, no problem. Yeah. Like, yeah. I could run through that door. Yeah. Easy. Easy. Rocky I said I could do it, I can I'm do it. I'm going to break a bone, yeah. but I'm going to do it. Rocky well, more like it. Apollo said I could do it, so I could do it, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah Rocky, like the... he just defines having a heart. And never giving up. Greatest underdog greatest, story yeah, ever. Greatest Absolutely. underdog. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, who else? Do we have movie pop quizzes left? I could try to do one. Yeah, okay, Let me see if I got one. What was Jeff Goldblum's biggest break? The Fly? Uh, Invasion oh of the Oh, my Bi- God. It's <laughs> like I'm not even, I don't even have a chance. But, also, but also Invasion of the Body Snatchers right before it. True. Opened him up. Yeah. Support. He's got a good support But The Fly was his first big break. I was yeah. a yeah. actor, yeah. So yeah. I'd, I'd give it to the fly. Thanks, man. Yeah. I would say the fly, too. Yeah. Because like, they're going to think Jurassic Park because I love Jurassic Park. But you're like, nope, the fly. I'm like, ah, <laughs> you guys just know. You do this for a living, man. <laughs> yeah, you're like, come on now. <laughs> I told you we've seen a lot of I'm like in the Monsterverse. I step outside the Monsterverse. I'm like, oh, my God. I really don't know that much about the movies, dude. <laughs> oh, oh my so God. Good. The fly's great. The Invasion of, Bo- Invasion of the Bias Snatchers is fantastic, too. Yeah. He's great. In it's it. an awesome alien movie. So he's so young in that one. He's, oh, he's a little baby. He's just a little baby. He he he's a little Jeff Goldblum. Jeffy. <laughs> he's right. just a little Jeffy. <laughs> yeah, did we have any haters or unsubscribes in this episode? We do. We have some good ones. So we like to read off hater comments as well as we have a fun thing on the show we do. It's called unsubscribing because if they used to make fun of our haters, be like, they unsubscribe from the show. So now our fans, they'll leave comments 
uh, and they say unsubscribe, but people don't realize that they're making jokes. It's like, pretend hate. Like, this okay. show's ridiculous. How could you make this mistake? Unsubscribe. And people yeah. are like, why are you unsubscribing from the show? They're really great. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's just, just our it's fans having fun. Okay, it's yeah. a joke. Okay. So John John wrote on our Poor Things episode, 40-year-old virgin, you guys are turning 34. I thought you guys were like 26. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Thanks. Hope to see you in Boston. Good sounds, jeans. Sounds like John's going to our live show. Yes. It's the Italian jeans, man. He knows. It's the Italian jeans. Uh, he also said, "Thank you for putting me on to Movie Seven, <laughs> which is Movie Seven, site. yeah, <laughs> which is a streaming site. They got everything. You have cheap. saved. You have saved my bank account. Still unsubscribing though. <laughs> <laughs> oh and then in our poor things episode, Gen Mania wrote, "If you two guys, if you two fuck this up, so help me God, I will unsubscribe." <laughs> and the poor things one, yeah. I hope we didn't miss anything up. I posted a clip about the Batman 2's delay on TikTok, and JK777 wrote, Something in the way. <laughs> Unsubscribed. <laughs> That's a pretty That's good it. joke. Unsubscribe. That's a good joke. Uh, Mickle Jackal wrote, My dumbass thought intermission timestamp 44 minutes was a great hidden gem film I never heard of. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's it for this week. <laughs> That's funny. All right. We have a great five-star review from Beth Edwards. She wrote, Two guys who love to nerd out. This is one of the most digestible film podcasts that makes it easy for even the most casual movie fan to follow along without any of the pretentiousness or I'm smarter than you talk <laughs> that you typically find listening to film bros. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's why we started the show. We yeah. hated those pretentious shows that had never made a movie before in their lives, and they're so critical of movies like Gladiator. How could you shit on Gladiator? <laughs> yeah. I love their takes and how genuine their passion for film and TV comes across each episode. have found many new favorites from their recs and in-depth analysis. I've been listening religiously since 2021. Wow. wow, Beth. Thanks, Beth. But I got to be honest, I still can't tell Anthony and James apart. So for that reason, I must unsubscribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Maybe one day, Beth. Maybe, Maybe one, one day. day. Sometimes I oh can't. My God. Thank you so much for the five-star review, Beth. I really appreciate it. In our last episode, we were both wearing glasses and hats, and I was a little more clean-shaven than usual. And even my girlfriend couldn't tr couldn't really tell. <laughs> she was like, which one's which? <laughs> still have that problem. Sometimes. Twinning. 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 All right. Twinning. Does anyone have a streaming recommendation? Yes. For the fans and listeners? Uh, to no surprise to anyone, the Rocky franchise is on max. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Um, Watch it. <laughs> mine's going to be The Witch, which is also on max. Nice. A great horror movie. Robert Eggers' first film. If you've never seen it, it's a great story about kind of like the origins of a witch. It's awesome. Really good. Mine would be... Okay, I don't, I don't want to mess this up. The Haunting or The Haunting on Hill House? Yeah, yeah. I watched that one a while ago. I'm not really, I'm not really big on um, streaming or or whatever a bunch of movies or whatever like that. So or at least new ones that I've gotten into. I just recently started actually giving more films a chance because I was so like, oh no, it has to be like a monster movie or whatever mm -hmm. like that. But or not even just like monster verse, just like Jaws, ET or something like that. So yeah. I have to say, A Haunting on Hill House is really nice and. Breaking Bad is probably my favorite show of all time. Did you just oh, watch it recently? I, this is like my third time going through the That's entire so show. Good. Like. Okay. Magnets! <laughs> Magnets. All of this <laughs> is all about me. <laughs> that's one of my, that's like the best new video meme is everything, this is all about me. I saw one recently of guys when they go see Dune Part 2. Everything, this is all about me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Facts. But yeah, um, yeah, we, we're happy to put you on to the Rocky franchise. Yes. yes. <laughs> Please as well as many others. Case, man. As well as many others. We have, yeah, we've seen so many and times. And the guest from Adam Winger who the directed. Guest. You would like it. It's very cool. It's, it's, it's awesome. Fantastic. It's really, really fantastic. good. But let's get back into our episode on Godzilla X Kong. Everybody here with Marquez from Wade Willie TV on YouTube and TikTok. Check him out. He covers the MonsterVerse extensively. So what did you guys think about the visual effects and CGI of this film? Exceptional. Yeah. Some of the best I we've seen great. in the year. Yeah. yeah. They did a really great job. Yeah. I mean, especially with uh, so many massive movies have so many visual effects going on, especially of uh, Marvel, DC, and Star Wars lately. This is like top tier. Like they really put their work in for this film, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. it looked fantastic. Especially since most of the movie was CGI. That's kind of crazy impressive. Because that means that, like, the, first of all, it's going to be super expensive to do something like that, too. And the time to put in for something like that, for a movie that's even just like an hour and 50 minutes mm -hmm. of just straight CGI monster action the entire time, they really gave us what we wanted on this one. Yeah, I mean, everything in Hollow Earth is just all CGI. And I was never really pulled out of uh, the immersive experience of the film. I was just totally in it. And, I, and a lot of the close-ups, especially of Kong, 
and some of the other characters, they looked really fantastic and photorealistic. They did a great yeah. job. I liked how much time we spent in Hollow Earth, too. A, a lot of the human stuff, we were on ships or interiors, but we were in Hollow Earth for quite a bit of this movie. That's what I'm oh, saying. Yeah. Like, a whole Hollow Earth film would be fucking sick. It would be amazing. Oh, yeah. And it was cool to discover the Iwi people, people that are protectors of Hollow Earth, and they're protected by the Kong and the giant apes in their past, and how basically Scar King, his goal in this film is to escape Hollow Earth mm -hmm. and try to take over the surface world. Right. Just kind of a pretty solid, typical take over the entire world plot for a villain. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really interesting. He's trying to find a way to get through one of those those tunnels and one of those, I guess what you would call... Doorways. Portals. Like a portal, yeah, yeah. A portal yeah. to get to the surface world. And the Iwi people are trying to stop him by stopping him from reaching those portals up in the sky. And I like like the gravity effects for when those two pyramids are about to touch to prevent him from doing it. I thought it was really cool. There was also, oh, yeah. just like in every other film of 2023, we were in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> every movie's in <laughs> every Italy. Every movie's in Italy. We talk about it all the time. In every Rome. fucking movie. Yeah. Well, the they must have a great tax credit when you shoot <laughs> yeah. there. Oh, yeah. my God. Seriously. Yeah. For real. For real. But so I, did like, I did like Godzilla sleeping in the Coliseum and making like a cat bed out of it. Yeah, <laughs> he went right back at yeah. the end of the movie. I'm like, oh my god, that's you went right back to the place. You can't, he can't resist the pasta, man. You just can't that resist pasta. I mean, you pasta. can't be doing your tours at the Coliseum anymore. <laughs> Literally, I mean, you can. It'd just be just you be might die. You might die. Yeah, you might die. Yeah. You might will, die. Probably will die. But also, it's so well built that it's still standing. <laughs> yeah, you so kind of just step over it instead of just you know destroying it. Yeah, there's like there's actually no adhesive use in the Coliseum. Yeah, not one ounce of adhesive at all. No, it's way. all put together piece by piece without well, cement. Yeah, no, no, it's just brick by brick, and they it's just all, um, you know, balanced, balanced, and just like pressure. Oh wow! Oh, they invented cement, the Romans. There's no adhesive in the Colosseum. Is there no adhesive? There's no cement. No. I need to go see this. But they did use poles. They use poles, but they so what the archways are like. So what they do is they stack them up brick by brick well, on yeah, each yeah, side, yeah. and then they get to that final one in the center, and the pressure. Holds them all in place. I thought what? there was still cement there because no. I, I know the Romans invented cement, but I yeah. thought no. That's so, scary. I'm not saying you're not wrong, but I'm saying I'm saying we did the tour. I know we That's did the they tour. On the tour, they're like, see, there's no adhesive at all. That's scary. What cool. if it just falls one day? It, it won't. Under. It's still perfectly built. It's just perfectly. It's pretty, yeah, they're a lot smarter than we are. Plus, oh. plus, <laughs> yeah. Plus, what you see is just the internals. It's like yeah. the skeleton of yeah. the Colosseum. Same as all the The exterior was removed. Yeah. What? Yeah. Same like you ever seen Gladiator. No. So you gotta watch Gladiator. Gotta watch Gladiator. That should actually yeah. be your first movie yeah, to watch. Gladiator, Gladiator first. first. Gladiator. Are yeah. you not entertained? Yes, that exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That should be the first movie you watch. Yeah. Okay. okay. And Rocky. There's some great shots of what the Coliseum would have looked like there. Oh, it's really man. cool. Yeah. Did they actually film anywhere near the Coliseum for Gladiator? They, no, they filmed they in the Middle it. East. They okay. built one. Yeah. yeah, a lot of movies like that, especially Gladiator 2, they're the same thing. I can't remember what country it is. It's maybe Jordan or somewhere else. But um, They shot in Jordan, yeah. Yeah, just like Dune Part 2 filmed in Jordan. So but, this um, Roman Empire stretched across the Middle East. Too, yeah. yeah, so they actually were pretty accurate with how they depicted ancient Rome. Because Ro ancient Rome stretched from the west of Europe to the Middle East and even into parts of Africa. No, but oh. I mean for just for filming purposes. Oh, no, I'm just saying, yeah. 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 They, yeah. they capture it really well, whereas yeah. so many other movies is, or TV shows is you're just in Rome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's just easier to film. So they film, they built like half the Colosseum in the, some random desert area. I think it was in Jordan in yeah. visual effects for the rest of it, but it still holds up today. It's they awesome. had to use this adhesive. They had to. I'm sure they did. They had to. I'm like thinking. They didn't just stack that one. <laughs> they were a lot nice. smarter than we were. Anyways, back to Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked up those bridges too. He just is, is in and out. There's yeah. a decent amount of carnage in this film. A lot yeah. of people died in this movie, which normally yeah, a lot of innocent, too often. a lot of building destruction too well same yeah. thing with yeah. godzilla vs kong and especially boston gets destroyed in, in the previous films oh, as yeah. well but yeah they fucking took out some skyscrapers in this movie yeah, yeah. i think you have to yeah. show stakes but you know what the worst part is they never actually show the stakes of the people like being like oh my god like i left my cat in there or something like that and then Kong just like backhands the building and she's like oh, <laughs> they're all dead <laughs> they're all dead yeah it's, it's like, like the... oreo no <laughs> you know, Juno. Like, oh. it's like that Juno. man of steel effect where man of steel you see what's happening on ground zero so you feel the stakes but all these other destructive city moments in other movies you don't really feel the stakes for the people yeah it's, i think it's because they get out of there quickly whereas man of steel you the whole third act is there mm -hmm. and you're you're in that that destructive um, city, destroyed city for at least 40 minutes for the set, last um, act of that film. Whereas like Pacific Rim, movies like this, they fight, they break some buildings, but then they move into Somewhere a new else. area. Yeah. So you kind of forget that you just watched a million people get killed. Mm -hmm. 
which I think is like allows the audience to be like move past that. And they destroyed the hopes of the Red Sox ever winning a home game because <laughs> <laughs> they blew up Boston. We're from Boston, so oh, word. Yeah, my yeah. dad's from Boston. Oh no way! What really? part? Nice. I have no idea. You have no idea. No. Very no. an Italian from Italian Boston. From Boston. An Italian from Boston sounds pretty Fuck typical yeah. to us. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like That's a the cool Italian guy. One. Yeah. Sounds like a cool guy. Was he born there? Yeah, uh, yeah, born in Boston or not in Italy. He was born yeah. in Boston. Yeah. yeah. And then moved to Kansas, then moved to California, now Vegas. He's Very in Vegas cool. Now. Oh, that's so cool. What yeah. a cool dude. There's a lot of Italians and a lot of Irish in Boston, so we're half each. Oh, word? Yeah, yeah. very common breed. That actually, yeah, that makes sense, actually, Loki. I can see it now. Yeah. I'm all like Italian, you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, I see. A little, you. little bit of an asshole arrogance to them. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's just like, the, you know, the Italian sense is just walking, you're like, oh, wait, there's something. Italian. They're, they're, you know? they're very loud. They're loud people. Very yeah. loud. <laughs> very loud. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What do you guys think are the best moments from this movie? Brother, brother, the one where he when he picked up the wart dog above his head yeah, uh, yeah. and just ripped it and all the blood yeah. comes and down. And the great opening. Oh, great yes. opening. Yeah. So you're talking about Kong's opening of the film where it's just kind of like a silent film for five minutes of Kong escaping predators. He set up traps all over his area. So he's very smart and he's hunting and also seeking others of his kind. And he he rips apart that monster and just gets covered in its green blood. Yeah, like this an intimidation great. to play. He's like, yeah. like that, pretty that was amazing. I loved it. And he takes a shower. <laughs> he's like, okay. Now that's good the it's like a day in the, It's like a day in the life of Kong. He's like, oh, great, another day. Yeah. Like, he's like exhausted. He's getting too old for this shit. Yeah. What I love up. about the creature design in this film, specifically with, with Kong, we have more scars, mm -hmm. but also he's got some gray hairs gray. and white hairs. Yeah. Like, and all this. So it's like this great attention to detail that Wingard put in there. Very yeah. distinguished gentleman. I asked him if uh, Kong is getting older. Like, I asked him, does this mean the gray hair, does this mean that he's like old now and he's just like starting to go downhill type thing? Or is it because he's a silverback gorilla and you know how they get those silver hairs or whatever, the gray hairs? Now he's like his prime or something like that. And uh, Adam said, no, it's just that after a while he has to get to a matured age. So this part of his life is where he's just at his top now. Like he mm -hmm. he's finally at his peak. Like I'm guessing because even in Godzilla vs. Kong, he didn't have all that gray. Like not as much at least. And now he does. So... Adam was saying that this is like his peak now. He's like finally fully matured. You know? Full power Kong. Full power Kong. Yeah. <laughs> He's going Super Saiyan. Going Super Saiyan. <laughs> I love the uh, I love the fight in Egypt with the pyramids and the suplex and it was just a lot of fun. Yeah. It was very funny too because Kong is trying to get Godzilla to understand. That he's trying to bring him down the portal. To save the earth and, yeah. and Godzilla's like fuck you bitch <laughs> yes. I'm gonna fucking kill you he walks it up Kong's yeah. like wait hold up bro hold up bro I'm gonna fucking kill you I was about like oh shit he's pink now fuck he's like, he's pink. He's like Godzilla god damn <laughs> fuck me up and there's a point where Godzilla's like oh fuck here we go yeah. so cause it was really fun to watch the suplex Destroying the pyramids. This is really funny, too. I love that moment. This Second great film sequence. that recently damaged the pyramids of Giza, which was Napoleon. He shot a cannon oh, yeah. at the pyramids in the Transformers, film. the last oh, Transformers wow. movie. Yeah. So the pyramids are pretty hot, too. Yeah. I think it's smart to use well-known landmarks to show the scale mm -hmm. of the Titans to understand just how tall they are. I always yeah. feel yeah. bad when they destroy historical landmarks, though. Like, when they were in Rome, fucking it up, I'm like, no, be careful. Yeah, be careful. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> like, be careful. Godzilla <laughs> the, the don't care. The more pyramids, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't care, though. Godzilla does not care. He does not care. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a solid plot, this movie, though. I mean, mm -hmm. eventually, Gia wakes Mothra to save the day to help stop King Scar, uh, Scar King and his troops from getting to the portal with mm -hmm. the gravity, the anti-gravity shift, which was pretty awesome. And then the Iwi people, they saved the day as well with the help of Isabel and Trapper. And I like Trapper. He's a lot of fun. Like you said, he's sort of just a cowboy. Mm -hmm. This Australian cowboy. Great accent from Dan Stevens as well. Is he British? I'm not sure. I believe he's maybe he's Australian. actually maybe he's I think actually, he's actually Australian. He actually Australian? He could be. Because it was awesome. It's Crocodile Dundee. He, he could be British. He was in Downton Abbey. Um, he could be either one. But he does great accents in general. Like if you when you watch the guest, you'll see he does a great American accent in that too. Really? But he's super funny as well as we have the beast, which is that that mechanical hand that they build, that glove. I guess you could say gauntlet for lack of a better word. Uh, and the yeah. thing with this movie is you can't look at it too critically with its writing. Because it's just like, hmm, we have a problem. How do we solve it? Remember that thing well, we built? The convenience uh. Kong gets frostbite on his right hand. Yeah. Oh, fortunately, we have the beast, which stands for the bio-enhanced and atomic seismic thunder glove. So let's go. We got that out back. Let me go grab Let's it. Go comes, really quick. I'll go get it. He's yeah. gone so, for 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. 10 thought, seconds, I thought, he comes I thought, back. I thought he was going to go on a journey to find this thing uh -oh. and bring it back. But he's literally there and back in 15 seconds. Then I was like... It's just a movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's like not, he would just pull out his yeah. wallet or something like that. I was I like, I don't give a fuck. We're we're talking about King Kong versus Godzilla. Like yeah. whatever, man. Sure. If it was his left hand, they'd be 
fucked. <laughs> oh, he was like left him. Ooh, Nothing the we left do about that. God damn it! I have the right one. I got some Vaseline, I guess. Yeah. I'll just, I'll put some uh, some aloe vera. Uh, yeah, aloe vera. <laughs> Her mother will shit on it. <laughs> Her natural essence. Mothra. <laughs> Mothra. I kind of wanted Mothra to be like a Pokemon and just say Mothra. Mothra. You She's know so what I really? You know what I think that we really missed out on this one, which I really I, I thought that they were gonna do with the glove. I thought that they were going to give him the lightning powers, which would be like homage to the original 1962 Godzilla versus Kong movie, where Kong got struck by lightning, and then he had lightning powers and was fighting Godzilla with lightning powers. No shit. And I'm thinking maybe with this glove, maybe for the future, maybe the glove, because you saw how it had like blue thunder every time he punched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if the glove just like breaks in the next movie or something like that, and he gets shocked, and then... I think they should do a whole mecha suit, a mecha Kong. Like, Like, why not? Like, Edge of Tomorrow. Why not? Really? Yeah, why not? Why the fuck not, man? It would take like the animalistic things away from them. You know what I'm saying? Like the, it would make it too, uh, I don't know, like artificial. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but it's fucking crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> yeah. If they made their own armor, if like the Kongs made their own armor out of like other Titans or something like that, kind of like warriors, mm-hmm. I, I would slide with that a lot. That's more. cool. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Because I like when Kong uses his axe as well. I, I love his axe as a weapon with the dorsal from a previous god from Godzilla or another another um, uh, Titan. Titan. Yeah. Dagon. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's a cool weapon as well. But what yeah, else did you guys like about this movie? Great. Yeah, yeah. What, what else did you guys like about this movie? I loved I loved everything about it. It was really fun. It was cool. I think the um, the uh they did a better job with the human characters, just simplifying it and I think Rebecca um Hall and the young actress who played Gia did a good job oh, yeah. of showing that family bond that was just kind of just a little forced last time. Um Yeah, I felt that too. Yeah, it was it was, little... But this time I felt more realistic. I think the actress is a little bit older, so she's definitely better at acting than when she was very little. And we're so talking about Gia, right? Yeah, Gia. You know, it's funny. The last movie, Godzilla vs. Kong, was her first movie ever. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, that was her first movie ever. And Gia's actually, you know, deaf and stuff like that, so she had people working with her. Mm. And she did an amazing job. And in my opinion, for your first movie, being that young, too, you did an amazing job in the first movie. And in this movie, too, you could tell that she's filling in. She's feeling a lot more comfortable being on set. Definitely and understanding it. Yeah. You can tell and I like sure. how involved the plot made her, especially with the Iwi people and being oh, yeah. like this savior uh, for the Earth. So I think that tying her in that way was great rather than her just being a friend to Kong. Yeah. Yeah. I have just one question for this movie. I loved it. But mm-hmm. there's one thing. So when we're in the inner area where uh, the Scar King has his other apes, right? The lava pit and yeah. the yeah. lava pit and everything. What are they building? What are, like it's a workers' camp. Obviously, it's supposed to represent a, a worker camp. Yeah. Um, and they seem to be slaves or indentured servants. Mm-hmm. What are they? What are they building? I was trying to figure out like why? Why are they taking these boulders away? And like they're just they, turning big rocks into little blocks. Yeah. Little rocks. I was trying to figure out like, what <laughs> well, are they doing? Were they building an area? Were they, no, they mining it out? They were trying to get out because like how they said in the movie, Godzilla trapped them yeah. by closing one of the most accessible portals to them for them to get out of Hollow Earth. So Godzilla like beamed one of the walls because they were killing Godzilla or whatever. So he beamed the wall, the rocks fell down, and I guess Scar King is making them all take those rocks out of that hole so they can finally go through the portal gotcha. to get out. Okay, that answered my question. Yeah. That's the one thing I'm like, what are they, what are they yeah, doing? Yeah, I think they could have done a little bit better job of explaining it for the casual viewer. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, see. I feel like I remember, yeah, because I, I was getting a little confused with that as well as who was trapped specifically down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now that makes sense. I loved makes when, sense. I probably my favorite part of the film was when um, he fought Kong and he, he, he was like fucking Kong up, but then Kong got back and he was just giving him a little trouble. And then Scar King, he's a character who like definitely is based in fear because he didn't want to keep fighting Kong on his own because he yeah. probably had a feeling he would lose. Yeah. Then he called out Shimo. And I like how She's like trapped behind this wall of lava, lava. And, and then they place the huge boulder down to stop the flow, and then it just revealed her yeah. in that pit. That was a really cool moment. That is amazing. You can yeah. even tell when uh, Scar King first like pointed the little dagger mm-hmm. at Kong. He's like, "Kill him!" She was fighting back. She was like saying no at first. Yeah. You see, and he's like, and then she's like, oh, "Okay, I guess I gotta do it." Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I like that. Shimo reminded me of the dragon in Deathly Hollows in the Green God Spain. Oh, the pale dragon, yeah, the pale yeah. dragon yeah. with the chains being yeah. controlled by pain. Yeah, it reminded me just like. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's sad. actually a direct comparison. Wow, that yeah. is actually so true. Yeah. Just that's why he gets paid then. the big bucks. Just for yeah. a living. Yeah, dude, you said, like I said, <laughs> just, just for missing, a living. Just missing ice breath, but no, pretty no much the deal. same. Yeah, pretty yeah. close. Pretty the pale same. skin, you know, the pale skin. I like the ice breath. That yeah. was cool. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. That was the coolest power. Yeah. I think Shimo's my favorite Titan in the movie. Sparkly, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sparkly, sparkly Shimo. Ancient Godzilla. Ancient Godzilla. Ancient Godzilla. And the final battle was great. Uh, and then the the fight for the 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 dagger 
Mm-hmm. And then uh, Suko crushing it with the axe. I was like, fuck yeah. Suko's a little badass, yeah. dude. I and then that. they fucked up Scar King. Oh my god. Yeah. Fucked him. And then just like, it was just a great kill. Freezing him. And then Kong just body slams him and crushes him to the little pieces. It was yeah. Great. It was I thought it was a great kill. He leaped into the air to do that. I yeah. was like, what? It's like badass. I wish that ending fight low key was, I, I wish it was longer, a little bit longer because, mm-hmm. and I know they're trying to like hurry up and like get it done because there's a lot of CGI going on here. But that end fight, I was like, oh my God, like I'm ready for this. And they mm-hmm. just whooped him so fast. I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm cool with that too. I yeah. wouldn't mind seeing the fight a little bit longer, but hey, <laughs> he didn't get the chance. So that's fine with me. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I had a good time with this movie, and it was an awesome invite and an awesome experience. And yeah, I think that's that's all we got for Godzilla X Kong. I think. What about yeah, you guys? Yeah, yeah. anything else? Absolutely. I, like I said, I had a I blast. Think of anything I had a else really good time up. with this film. It was uh, one. It's just a shut your brain off kind of movie. Just sit back and relax and watch a bunch of giant monsters fight each other, and don't think about it too harshly because there's plenty of like plot holes and plot armor, but. Let, let that go and it's a blast great music really fun cast and mm-hmm. cgi visual effects are fantastic and overall very fun tone i was surprised yeah. yeah yeah had a really good time it was awesome all right do you want to plug your stuff before we head out sure um wade willie tv on youtube wade tv on tiktok and that's actually about it yeah and, and we're posting at the same time on your channel as our channels and obviously it'll also be on spotify and apple Podcasts for your listeners to tune in if they want to check it out there so we did a little crossover episode with marquez and his channels so thanks for tuning in everybody be sure to become a patron of raiders of lost podcast at patreon.com slash raiders of lost podcast leave those five star ratings and reviews and take care see you next time this episode was executive produced by our chosen one patrons cody moen andrew hagan Benjamin Cook, Calvin Murphy Griggs, Darian, Tyler McFly, Mark Nikaj. Our Chosen One patrons are our biggest supporters. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button as well, notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you can listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel.